Good evening. Welcome to Pittsburgh Magazine's final 2020 virtual women in business event presented by ST Bank. I'm Betsy Benson, the publisher at Pittsburgh Magazine, and we're excited to see you here tonight to honor four amazing businesswomen from our community. I'd like to start by thanking our sponsors, Presley Ridge, UPMC Health Plan, University of Pittsburgh Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence, and our presenting sponsor, s and Bank. There are a few things to keep in mind to ensure everything runs smoothly this evening. Uh, please make sure to keep your mic muted when in the main meeting room. Don't forget to update your name so that it appears first, last business, as mine does. Uh, select speaker view in the top right-hand corner. You can see all the speaker options up there. Uh, try speaker view. Uh, when you move to the breakout sessions, however, you might wanna change that to gallery view. Please submit any questions you have along the way via the chat. Uh, if you run into technical issues, Casey Mahaven and Katie Miller, our event coordinators will be monitoring the chat to help you uh, and answer any questions that you have. So let's review tonight's agenda. First, we will hear from our nonprofit partner, Presley Ridge. Then we'll move into our first breakout session of the evening. This will happen automatically like magic. You don't need to do a thing. Keep in mind that if you have been attending these events this year, we're trying a different format. We're doing speed networking and we're doing three sessions. So lots of networking, wanting to pack in as much as we can to have you meet some new people this evening. During the breakout session, you should be ready to introduce yourself and give a one minute elevator pitch, so to speak, just who you are, what you do. Um, and you're gonna be doing that you know, three times throughout the evening uh, and be, be comfortable in sharing a little bit of information, uh, but understand that those sessions are gonna be over, start and over really quickly. So you will have uh, been able to, to meet someone new uh, or a couple people uh, new and then we'll be sharing contact info uh, following the event tomorrow. We'll share with everyone tonight the contact information for the attendees. Anybody who's uncomfortable with that can, can opt out. Uh, but we have found uh, that people are really eager to contact people that they meet at the events. Uh, so after about three minutes, the breakout room will close and you will see a 10 second timer up, that'll pop up, that'll kind of warn you you're getting close, but please continue to talk through that timer so you get maximum use of that time. At the close, that breakout session will end and you'll be again magically transported into the main area. Uh, at that point, Tammy Sizz from s and Bank will present our honorees for the evening. Follow the honoree, uh, following the honoree presentation, we will move into the second breakout session. Then you'll return to the main room for a 15 minute keynote presentation by Christina Casotas, followed by a brief Q and A. So if there's anything you wanna know about the airport, air travel, economic development in the airport corridor, uh, definitely make note of those questions, put them into the chat during her talk. Um, and we will be uh, following up on those questions after her, her talk. Uh, following the keynote, we will uh, move into our third and final breakout networking session. Uh, and again, this will happen automatically. Okay, so that's the run through of what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pack a lot in, uh, learn something, meet someone, you know, and take, have a bunch of takeaways. So onto the program. I would like to welcome our nonprofit partner for this year's series, Presley Ridge. Presley Ridge provides individuals and families with hope and support through life's challenges. Alisa DeLuca is the Director of Individual Giving and Donor Engagement. Alisa. Thank you, Betsy. Um, and good evening, everyone. Presley Ridge is honored to be here tonight in partnership with Pittsburgh Magazine in celebration of four very impressive women. And we're thrilled that one of our own board members, Kara Eaton, is being recognized for her achievements this evening. The contributions each of you made to attend this event will help us to continue to support children and families right here in the Pittsburgh region, as well as in the five other states where we provide services. So thank you all for being here. For those of you who might not be familiar with Presley Ridge, we were founded in 1832 as two orphanages on the north side of Pittsburgh, one on Presley Street and the other on Ridge Avenue. 
188 years later, we now serve more than 10,000 individuals and families each year through foster care and adoption, specialized education, and mental health services. And we provide all of these services in the community, in homes and schools, and in our outpatient clinics throughout our regions. I really could go on and on about the great work that we do, but if you're truly interested in hearing about how our services impact kids and families, I invite you to join us this Thursday at four o'clock for a virtual storytelling event. You will be able to hear directly from kids and families who have worked with Presley Ridge about how their lives were impacted and improved through our programs. This event is free, so we do encourage a donation to support our mission. And I promise you will truly enjoy hearing these courageous stories told in our clients' own words. For an emotional person like I am, hearing what these kids and families have been through and what they've been able to overcome will likely bring you to tears, but I promise you it's worth it. My colleague Lisa is going to put the link to register in the chat box, and I hope you will all join us. As we enter into the holiday season, we continue to strive to provide for our kids and families in need. We are hosting our annual Angel Tree program again this year to collect gifts for kids who otherwise might not have anything under the tree. Last year, our generous community partners provided gifts for more than 600 children, and we do expect that need to be even greater this year. So if you or your company are interested in helping with our Angel Tree program, feel free to reach out to me directly, or you can visit our website for more information. As always, we continue to vow to do whatever it takes to provide hope and support for our kids and families. Congratulations again to all of the honorees being recognized tonight. And now please enjoy a short video about Presley Ridge. Have a great rest of your evening. Finding hope and support through life's challenges. We partner with our families to meet them where they are, when they need it most. We are grateful for those who have trusted Presley Ridge to help build stable, healthy families and lifelong connections that lead to a successful, happy life. And we thank you, our communities, for investing in our mission. To find out more about our work in your community, visit PresleyRidge.org. Okay, thank you, Elisa. Great video, great ideas with the virtual storytelling event and the Angel Tree program. So at this time, we're going to move into our first breakout session. So remember, this session is going to be kind of speed dating style. Uh, so don't be shy, jump right in there and introduce yourself. Remember, you each have uh, about a minute to introduce yourself and give your elevator pitch. And the transition to the breakouts will happen automatically. There's nothing you need to do. After a few minutes, the breakout rooms will close and you'll be automatically brought back to this main meeting room uh, for the honoree presentation. So here we go. All right, so welcome back. And here to speak on behalf of ST Bank is Tammy Sizz. Tammy is Vice President, Private Banker at ST. Tammy. Thank you, Betsy. Um, good evening, everyone. And thank you for being here and sharing your evening with us. ST Bank is proud to be a presenting sponsor of Pittsburgh Magazine's Women in Business. At s and Bank, we are committed to the communities we live and work in. Women in Business offers us the opportunity to network with one another and honor women doing great things in our community, all while raising funds for Presley Ridge. I'm pleased to have the privilege to present tonight's nominees. Our first honoree is Stephanie Nickham D'Olivera. Stephanie Nickham D'Olivera was an attorney practicing labor and employment law for a small firm in Altoona when she became impressed with one of her clients, Sheets. Stephanie joined the company as a human resources manager and seven years later became the family owned company's first woman executive when she was named vice president of human resources. Stephanie is responsible for the strategic planning and execution of all employee related initiatives, including talent acquisition, employee relations, diversity and inclusion, and leadership development. With responsibility for more than 20,000 employees in 600 plus locations in six states, the position presents a huge human resources challenge 
especially because Family Owned Sheets is committed to offering sustainable careers built on an inspiring culture and community engagement. Stephanie's advice to other women in business is to find your authentic voice and learn to be courageous and brave enough to use it for good. Try to let go of pleasing everyone and be brave enough to speak your truth, she said. Congratulations, Stephanie. At this time, we would like to invite Stephanie to say a few words. Thank you so much, Tammy. And um, I'm humbled to be recognized by Pittsburgh Magazine. I'm actually ch choked up. I didn't anticipate being choked up, but I am. Um, I'm so honored and I'm um, so thrilled that I've been welcomed by the Pittsburgh community and so many wonderful people who are uh, making a difference in the greater Pittsburgh area. Um, I wanted to congratulate the other honorees this evening, Kara, Heather, and Doris. I think it is so important that as women leaders, we are supporting and lifting up other women leaders. So I'm so excited to share the spotlight with these three amazing women. So thank you again. And um, my contact information is available. I'm always here to provide support um, for any other women leaders, men too, but women leaders. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Kara Eaton is our next honoree. Kara Eaton, as an accounting major who realized she had more of an affinity for words than numbers, Kara Eaton decided on law school at the conclusion of her undergraduate studies. A Duquesne University law degree led her to 10 years of litigation work at several local firms where she gained deep understanding of several industries. Two years ago, an opportunity arose that allowed her to go in-house at Crown Castle and piece all that experience together. As senior attorney, Kara helps to prevent legal issues and disputes from arising, and if they do arise, to manage and resolve them. Kara is also involved in Crown Castle's focus on diversity and inclusion and has helped to promote those initiatives inside the legal department and as they apply to external counsel and vendor decisions. Through Leadership Pittsburgh's Leadership Development Initiative, Kara had a chance to observe the leadership board and great work done by Presley Ridge and recently joined its board. What advice does Kara offer women in business? Say yes to things that may make you a little nervous. When looking at a potential opportunity, ask yourself, why not me? Congrats, Kara. Now we welcome Kara to say a few words. Thank you, Tammy. Um, thank you for such a, a wonderful introduction. And um, I wanna thank uh, Pittsburgh Magazine and um, s and Bank and also Presley Ridge for um, this recognition and and for supporting such an awesome program. Um, like Stephanie said, I think, you know, that this is such a, a great, um, a great program. And I am so incredibly honored um, to be recognized among this, this group of really incredible and accomplished women. Um, so congratulations to um, the other honorees. And I look forward to, to meeting all of you um, during the breakouts. And um, my information is available and please feel free to reach out to me um, and thank you again. Thank you, Kara. Our next honoree is Heather Starfiedler. Heather Starfiedler, PhD, is the chair of the Department of Community Engagement at Point Park University and the co-founder of Play It Forward Pittsburgh. A Kodak kid born and raised in a small town near Rochester, New York, Heather's home was full of cameras which sparked an early interest in media. But her broadcast journalism studies at SUNY College at Buffalo left her wanting a career that contributed more directly to society. She discovered a joy in teaching during her graduate studies at SUNY Albany and Nova Southeastern University. A visit to Pittsburgh impressed her and soon after she decided to relocate. In 2000, she joined Point Park University as a faculty member and later was named chair in the School of Communication. In 2011, Heather co-founded Play It Forward, which each year collects tens of thousands of gently used toys, books, and games, and gives them to families in need. 
She serves as co-chair of the organization's board. Five years ago, Heather decided to step down from her communication chair position to start a nonprofit outreach initiative for the school, Wood Street Communications, and become the founding director of a new PhD program in community engagement at Point Park. Heather says, even if it meant taking a step down, it was more important to find work that had deep meaning to me than keep climbing the ladder. Congratulations, Heather. At this time, we would like to invite Heather to say a few words. Thank you so very much. Uh, like the other nominees, I am truly honored and humbled by this uh, recognition. And I thank Pittsburgh Magazine, s and Bank, and Presley Ridge, and of course, my colleagues at both Point Park University and Play It Forward. Um, I have lots of colleagues, both men and women, but I think the women that I've worked with um, and had mentors over the years um, at both of those organizations have really lifted me up and helped me find work that not only feeds my soul, but hopefully helps give back to the community and, and make it a better place as well. So I'm truly honored and humbled. Uh, while I don't think of myself as a woman in business as much since I'm an educator um, and a nonprofit director, I will gladly accept this on behalf of all, all women everywhere who are out there trying to make it a better place. So thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. Our final honoree is Doris Carson Williams. In 1977, when Doris Carson Williams returned to Pittsburgh after a 12 year absence, things had changed in her hometown. Williams met phil philanthropist Elsie Hillman who encouraged her to run for public office. A campaign for city council failed but succeeded in propelling her career. Doris's work for an IT company that helped financial institutions with tech conversions led her to a position at Dollar Bank, where she worked for 11 years in operations, planning, and small business development. While there, she graduated from the Graduate School of Banking and Finance at Fairfield University. Next, she joined the Office of Business Enterprises at Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh, where she helped to create revenue streams with new developments such as the Carnegie Science Center. After 12 years at the museum, she started to get calls from Robert Agbede, a successful entrepreneur who was convinced Doris was the right person to create a chamber of commerce for African-Americans in Pittsburgh. Doris resisted at first, but eventually embraced Agbede's vision and opened the African-American Chamber of Commerce in October 1998 with 28 paid members. Doris is proud to say that since the pandemic started in March, 25 new companies have joined the chamber. Doris is highly sought after for boards and civic leadership posts. She served as the co-chair of the Pittsburgh G20 Summit in Pittsburgh in 2009. She was the president of the Pittsburgh branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland and now serves as a member of the board of directors for the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. What is the best advice she's ever received? Never give up on your goal. Keep the faith and move forward. Congrats, Doris. Now we welcome Doris to say a few words. Let me first thank s and Bank, Pittsburgh Magazine, and Presley Ridge for this distinct honor. I am truly honored with this. And to our, uh, my other honorees, congratulations to each of you. Working with the African American Chamber of Commerce, although that's our name, we're 80% African American, the rest are white, Hispanic, Latino, and Indian, because we believe all small businesses have to work together to help support our region. We are now the ninth largest chamber in Western Pennsylvania, and our mission is to continuously improve business opportunities for small business owners and professionals. Thank you again for this wonderful honor, and uh, I look forward to talking with others in the chat room. Pittsburgh Magazine just uh, joined the African American Chamber. I totally uh, agree, Doris. It, all small businesses need each other, uh, and uh, and magazines need the chamber too. So we're happy to be a member. Uh, I think it was official today. I got my packet. So exciting. Um, okay. So um, the the what you heard were some um, excerpts from the profiles of our four honorees. You can find the complete. Uh, profile in the magazine. 
in the October issue. And we can also check out pittsburghmagazine.com uh, to read them in their entirety as well. Okay, at this time, we are going to move into our second speed breakout session. Uh, remember, they'll happen automatically. You don't need to do anything. After a few minutes uh, of discussing uh, business uh, and other activities in your session, the rooms will close. You'll automatically be brought back into this main meeting room where we'll get to meet Christina Casotas. See you soon. Okay, welcome back. I hope you all uh, had a nice chat uh, with your, um, your speed networking. And remember, we'll be sharing contact info so that you can uh, follow up uh, and hopefully uh, do business. We always like to have our, uh, have our attendees actually have some, develop some concrete business relationships as a result of this um, event. Um, at this time, it is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Christina Casotas, who I'm sure you all know who she is. She is one of our preeminent uh, economic development leaders, civic leaders, um, and executives in the market. Uh, remember to please submit any questions you might that might occur to you uh, during her, her talk via the chat feature. We'll monitor that and we'll uh, be sure to ask her those questions at the close. So, as CEO of the Allegheny County Airport Authority, Christina Casotas has led a dramatic turnaround at the Pittsburgh International Airport, a near doubling of nonstop destinations served, year after year of strong passenger traffic growth, and an ambitious terminal modernization program. During her tenure, Pittsburgh International was named Air Transport World's 2017 Airport of the Year, which is a highly coveted honor, and Regional Airport of the Year by Kappa Center for Aviation. Uh, Fast Company Magazine named Pittsburgh International Airport as one of the most innovative companies in the world, as well as naming it a finalist in its World Changing Ideas Awards, both this year. So uh, pandemic has not slowed Christina uh, down. Uh, she also received the 2017 Excellence in Visionary Leadership Award from the Airports Council International North America and was named the 2017 Director of the Year for Medium-Sized Airports by Airport Revenue News. So you can see the list goes on. She is a frequent speaker at national and international aviation events. She holds an MBA from MIT Sloan School of Management and a bachelor's from the University of Massachusetts. She's also a member of the board of directors for S&T Bancorp. Christina resides in Sewickley with her husband and her son. Christina, welcome. Thanks so much, Betsy. It's always great to be at an event with the magazine. And I, I really want to uh, congratulate all of the award winners this evening. Doris, I'm always happy to see you celebrated. Um, Doris is a fantastic partner to us at the airport and one of the first people to welcome me when I got to Pittsburgh six years ago. I just met Kara for the first time in a breakout session. So um, Heather and Stephanie, you're a great company and, and congratulations to you all. I appreciate your organizations um, putting you into leadership positions so you can even get these awards. So uh, Betsy had this really great introduction. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to jump in and say, yes, we did all these great things and then the bottom fell out. Um, we are, um, and I, I'm conscious of this. I, first of all, I know there are a number of women on the, uh, on, in the audience who are from s and Bank. So I hope you'll forgive this, this analogy, but right now being in aviation or travel is like being a banker in 2008. We are the industry getting hammered, just hammered constantly. Not a lot of good news. <laughs> so we're really trying to create it. Um, we had been on an amazing run of making a difference, not only to the people in Pittsburgh um, by offering more nonstop service potential to places that people wanted to go, but really we were expanding our footprint to act in much more of an economic development role by using our real estate and looking at how we could sweat the asset in order to benefit the entire community. So let me just give you a little bit of, of what's been going on since March. 
Um, I'm home, which is uh, intentional. Every two weeks, we switch out our leadership team so that nobody ever, we never leave the airport unable to run. So I, there are a group of people on my team that I haven't seen in person since March. We did this in, at first thing uh, when the pandemic was announced. We had gone through our pandemic plan in February. Um, I had been traveling to China quite, quite a bit. We followed news from there. We knew it was going to get bad. And we actually started monitoring this in January. So by the time the World Health Organization announced a pandemic, we took all of our non-on-site essential positions, all of them, and split them into two teams. Team one is in the first half of the month, first to the 15th. Team two is in the second half of the month. I'm on team two. So I don't go back to the office until Monday. And otherwise, we're all virtual, right? So this was done deliberately to make sure <laughs> that we could continue to operate because we don't ever have the benefit of closing down. You can't close an airport. You all need your e-commerce coming in. Um, you wanna make sure that the mail gets here, that personal protective equipment and vaccines are gonna be delivered when it's time. And we also have two military bases. So we could never close. We also wanted to make sure that we would stay open no matter what for the people who had to travel. And we wanted to make sure that we were self, uh, excuse me, safe and creating a healthy environment for people who work there and who had to travel at the same time uh, for passengers as well as staff. So what's been going on? We were used to seeing 15,000 people a day come through the airport. In April, that was down 95%. It was, it was just shockingly depressing. And it just, it, it broke my heart. Um, and now we're up to about half, which is fascinating. We thought we'd stay down at about 70% for the year, and we're up to 50%. That's really being driven largely by leisure. There's not a lot of business people traveling right now, um, understandably so. We are expected to lose about $70 million this year, half of which will get made up for in, a, um, in the first stimulus package that was passed by Congress. That'll give us about, uh, that'll give us $36 million. And uh, that is obviously a help, but you know, when people aren't parking or going to McDonald's uh, and planes aren't landing, that's our revenue stream. We are not funded by any local tax dollars. So if, um, if we lose money, the airlines have to make it up. That's, that's how it works with us. So that's what's been going on. All that said, there's a lot that's, that's happening. So we've said, we, we uh, said in the beginning that even though our business has slowed, our efforts have actually accelerated. And I'm going to talk at the end about why I think leadership is key to all of that. Um, for those of you who are women in business, you probably have worked for a lot of bad leaders. Um, and I hope you're in a position now to make a big difference as you look forward and realize, oh, wait a minute, people actually do matter. And I don't have to listen to all those people who tell me it's not about people. Right, and we can just get somebody else. So I'll leave that stuff for the end. Um, we, announced, we announced our Pit Safe Travels program, which if you've been to the airport, is kind of fun. It's very much Pittsburgh themed when it comes to the markings and social distancing or the train, et cetera. But we are requiring facial coverings in the airport for all uh, employees and passengers. We encourage social distancing. We've done that through a lot of signage. We've done a lot of enhanced cleaning and disinfecting. Turns out people want to see people, <laughs> they want to see the cleaners these days. In the old days, we tried to hide them. Now we make sure that the carts are moving through, right? And passengers are there. Um, we have installed protective shields, reconfigured seating, and, and moved into a lot of touchless transactions. Again, not just for passengers, but also for staff. In the very beginning, I had a whole lot of people saying, you've got to be kidding. I have to keep coming to work and you don't. You know, that's, that's a hard thing to manage. Um, so we made sure that, first of all, we described everybody, everybody's essential who works at the airport. The question is, are you essential on-site or can you work remotely? And for those who were essential on-site, we worked hard to make sure that we were looking at actually the individual jobs to make sure that people could perform them at social distances and in ways where people would stay safe. To date, we've had one case. So we, I, I think we're doing a very good job and I'm proud of, of the team. We have, uh, for those of you in, uh, having anything to do with energy, you may know that we will be the first airport in the world to be completely powered by our own microgrid. That is something that People's Natural Gas won the ability to build. And so that's at no cost to us. It's actually on time. It will be um, running next, uh, probably by June. And that's five natural gas fire generators, as well as eight acres of solar that you'll be able to see when you are approaching the airport. 
So that'll be up and running. That will save us on energy and uh, it will actually take some of the gas out of the ground as well as, you know, raised from, I mean, it's our, it's all of our energy that we're producing at the airport that's being used to power the entire airport. And as I said, so that's, that, that's actually what we won the Fast Company Award for, most innovative ideas or a runner up. I think we were a runner up for that one. We're also uh, looking to, what we're really looking to do is how do we sweat the assets so that even though passengers aren't there, we're focused on every other part of the business to try to pay attention to revenue opportunities, but also, you know, my favorite term is let's not waste a crisis, right? What can we do now that maybe we couldn't do before? So we are uh, very focused on our real estate efforts. We have um, announced that we are taking 195 acres at the airport and turning it into what we call at neighborhood 91. Pittsburgh has 90 unique neighborhoods. We're the 91st at neighborhood 91. This is where we hope the additive manufacturing industry will land in the US. We, where we will, oh my God, there's somebody's dog that is so cute. <laughs> where we will um, see all parts of the ecosystem that will be condensed and co-located, which will allow for a much shorter production time. And therefore we hope to accelerate the adoption of that industry. Uh, Wabtech, which is a Pittsburgh based company, $8.7 billion in revenue, just announced that they are going to be joining us at Neighborhood 91, which is huge. Um, so we've, we've got that going and um, we're very excited about that. In addition, the Richard King Mellon Foundation gave us a million dollar grant uh, in order to help put Pittsburgh on the world stage for additive. So that's, that's one of the things that we're really doing from a regional benefit perspective. We're uh, pivoted, instead of talking to passenger airlines these days, we're talking to cargo airlines. Uh, Cafe is flying in twice a week nonstop from Hong Kong with consumer goods. And um, that will go through Thanksgiving and we continue to work with other parts of the cargo industry to offer Pittsburgh International Airport as, a, as an alternative to Chicago's O'Hare and JFK, which is where really almost all of the freight is flown into or out of. It's just trucked into the rest of the um, Northeast, Midwest, and, and Southeast. What else? Uh, the big news is that our terminal modernization program is on hold, but we are continuing with design. So we were actually, I mean, talk about like being pulled back from the brink at the last minute. We were supposed to break ground in April and go to the bond market in May. <laughs> it was just, we're sitting there thinking, oh, this isn't gonna happen. So um, we actually took that time to work with members of the community in, uh, health, uh, in the health industry, as well as other parts of travel to look at how can we plan for what the, what the uh, post design impacts may be. If you remember, and all of you are old enough to remember pre 9-11, there was no TSA. You went to the gate, your mother came with you, you could say hello or goodbye to your best friend. And then 9-11 happened and boom, we had to shove all of those cheap TSA checkpoints into airports around the country and the world. Then we had to find room for the explosive uh, detection systems in the baggage claim areas. So what we're looking at is, okay, well, we've got a terminal that was at 60% design. What should we plan for, for this kind of focus on health, the health lens that we think are, we are convinced people are gonna continue to look at facilities with. So we've been, took a little detour um, and we have uh, incorporated a lot of that thinking into design. And, um, and so now we're at about 90% design and fingers crossed, hoping to um, break ground next spring. That's, that's the goal. So that's really what's been going on. I'm watching time. I know that uh, Betsy wanted me to keep this to about 15 minutes. So let me just tell you where, where, what I wanna end with. And, and that is that, you know, we're doing, we're actually doing okay. Actually, we're not perfect, but I'd say we're actually better than okay. We're doing great. Um, we're navigating, as I keep telling the team, we're navigating through a really thick fog. Um, and really all that's visible is the next mile or the next step, and that's okay, right? We also, we also really do have a, a, a sight set on the future. So we've got half of our team and half of our time spent on what's the immediate issue that has to be solved while we're not losing sight of the fact that we will emerge from this and we wanna make sure that we come out of it stronger. Um, we, as far as I'm concerned, the easiest thing we did was cut costs, 
and you know make plans to keep the team healthy and safe. And to me, those are table stakes. The thing that matters the most to me in all of this is how we are leading in our own organization and how we are able to position ourselves in the community in a leadership perspective. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing that matters in this is, is how we show up and how we work together. I have been involved in organizations that have really smart people and lots of silos and lots of gaps. And we have been for the past five years building an organization that doesn't. Um, I, what I tell my team constantly is the most, I actually said to everybody on the day that we, we decided to split the teams, I said, this is where communica communication times a million. That's the goal. Every Wednesday from March for six months, every Wednesday, I did three live phone calls for my team. 11 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and 11 p.m. every Wednesday. And I just told them what we knew, what was going on. We answered questions. Anybody could dial in from home or from the shift. And we had, we, because I recognized that people in situations like these crises really just want to know, am I okay? Is my job okay? Are we okay? Uh, we don't lie to them. We, sometimes we say we don't know. But here's what we do know. And that's what we focus on. So... Um, right now, my big message to the team is let's look after everybody's mental health. It's as, as important as your physical health. And at an airport, you know, if we're not all okay, then that actually can get people hurt. So we are very, very focused on putting a spotlight on mental health issues, on asking for help, on recasting things as resilience instead of, you know, um, mental health problems. I've got a predominantly male workforce. And, you know, I've been amazed at how many people have reached out and said, thank you for saying something. Or, um, you know, I've struggled and I, I didn't know. So we're uh, doubling down on resources that we're making available for our team uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a stressful time for our industry as it is, I'm sure, for many of yours. None of us are, are having it easy right now. Um, so we're not close to being out of the woods, I would say, as an industry and vaccine aside, you know, getting it distributed and throughout the population is going to be key for the travel industry to come back. We, we estimate one in 10 jobs worldwide is tied to the travel industry. So, you know, if, if we don't come back, that's going to be a problem for everybody. Um, so we're very focused on that. I spend a lot of time talking to CEOs around the country and around the world within the ecosystem. And I can promise you that we're all very focused on doing our best uh, to get people back flying again when the time is right and when they're comfortable. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. I will tell you, as I said earlier, I'm working from home on one of my, <laughs> my Wednesday calls. The dog was barking and my husband wasn't moving fast enough to let him out. And I, you know, and I said, I said to people, listen, this is why I talk about mental health because everybody's got stress somewhere. And uh, the next day I ran into a couple of electricians. Um, it was my first day back. One of them said to me, how's the dog? And the other one said, the dog? I want to know how her husband is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's funny. I said, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed. And they're like, no, no, it makes you human. And that's what I think our job is in all of this is to remember our humanity and to make sure that that's what we're putting out there in the world so that we can uh, get each other through this kind of really crazy time. So with that, I'll end and thank you, Betsy, again for this opportunity. Thank you, Christina. Great comments, uh, great tales from, from the front in aviation. Mm -hmm. um, we, did, we have a, a couple of good questions. One from uh, Leanne Munger, uh, just kind of acknowledging how kind of terrifying uh, it is right now, just the, the disruption of business, mm -hmm. but just you know, having to make these decisions. And, and you know, how do you literally kind of come up with that courage to keep going? Uh, well, that's, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer. Um, I, I, I don't think there's anybody who's worked for me that I haven't asked the question, who's in your kitchen cabinet? Who do you go to when you need somebody to have your back? So um, look, I'm a fundamentally a glass half full person, but that doesn't mean that I, I live in optimism at all times. It, it, you, 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 in leadership, I think you have to show up in a way that people feel comfortable following you, but you also have to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who take care of you. 
And so the courage comes from, you know, finding something to um, be optimistic about. And, and I think that it's incumbent on us to take care of ourselves first. In my industry, you know, I'm dying to get back on a plane and hear somebody tell me to put the oxygen mask on myself first uh, before I put it on someone else. But that's, that's, that is a hallmark of our industry. And I would say it's, it's really what we all have to do right now. Like I'm, I'm a big believer in um, taking care of yourself because that's the first step to uh, finding your courage. Uh, it's so true. Um, I, you know, I know from, from talking with you over the years that a big part of your job is being out there, you know, flying to China, flying all over the world and right. opening up these routes for us so we can go places right. and even have some direct flights, which you have brought to Pittsburgh, right. you know, and in marketing our, our airport mm -hmm. to the world. So your day-to-day -day job is dramatically different. Oh it's much my God! I, like, right? Get me on a plane. I'm. I have. I have not been this grounded in 25 years. I have never, ever had. First of all, my skin looks great because I have no like jet lag and time zone <laughs> crap. Right. Um, but it's. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm chomping at the bit. This is a very different life for me right now. Yes, I do. I, I can't wait to get on a plane myself. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's a question from uh, Dr. Fieldler from uh, Point Park. Uh, do you think that business travel will, will return to pre-COVID days? And if not, what might fill the gap left by those travelers? I am absolutely convinced it will return. And let me tell you why. I actually wrote a, a, a something for our um, publication, Blue Sky News, about this. I did take a trip in July, had a, an airline that was just, there was a, there was a misconnect on something. And uh, I was like, that's it. I'm getting on a plane and I'm going. And in over a dinner, socially distant with outside and everybody doing all the right stuff, you know, we solved the problem. And what I am convinced of is that the reason that all of this works right now and why we can have this conversation over a virtual environment is because we're all doing it. The minute somebody starts traveling, they have the distinct advantage. And then everybody has to start traveling. It only works because we're all doing it at the same time. So yes, I think it returns. I think we've got a long way for it to go. First of all, there are issues of health that people are concerned about and the economics may not work for everybody right away, but I absolutely believe that there are two things. One is you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. And once you've, been, once you've had that ability to travel, you're gonna wanna get back to it. Uh, and the second is that that's how business gets done. It's face to face. Wow. And, and we'll probably value it more, you know, once yeah. we're able to return, whether to business travel or any kind of treasure yeah. travel, travel, we're going to enjoy it more. Thank you, Christina. It was Thank really, you. really fun to hear your remarks. Um, and, and definitely don't waste a crisis. I love that. And it's worth remembering mm -hmm. and applying to all of our different um, uh, businesses. Um, at this point, we are going to move into our final breakout session. And again, the transitions will happen automatically. Uh, so we will see you in just a few minutes. Um, so before we go, I'd like to ask everybody to pose for a quick few digital pictures. Um, so hold on here. Okay. Ready. One two, three, smile. We'll do another one. One, two, three, smile. All right, perfect. I think we got it. Um, as you know, we'll be, we'll be sharing contact info so you can follow up uh, and do business with someone that you meet, collaborate, help them, they can help you. Uh, so, so many thanks to Christina Casotas for that inspiring talk. I um, hope we uh, get to see each other on a plane one of these days. Um, thanks for joining us again tonight. Thanks to s &T Bank. Uh, we hope you had a great time, learned someone, met some new people, and found some inspiration. Uh, and we hope to see you again soon, hopefully in person. Good night. <laughs>